The following lesson is linked to learning outcome four, language. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to identify and explain the meanings of words and use them correctly in a range of texts. Learners should be able to use dictionaries and a thesaurus for different purposes, such as researching meanings and pronunciation. Hi there, here's a tool that I could use to fix my car and here is a tool that I could use to put up a picture and here is a tool that I could use to improve my language. Even though a dictionary is a book, it is helpful to think of it as a tool. If you use it properly, a dictionary can help you to understand and learn language at school and in everyday life. However, just like any other tool, you have to know how to use it properly to get the maximum benefit out of it. So, in today's lesson, we will be learning about how to use a dictionary. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify abbreviations and symbols used in dictionary definitions and extract information from a dictionary. Although there are lots of different types of dictionaries, they all have certain features in common that you can use to help you use any dictionary effectively. To learn about some of these features, we are going to examine one word in a dictionary, the word cheese. Here is a slightly simplified shortened extract from the Oxford English Dictionary for the word cheese. Wow! If you thought that cheese was just something to make a sandwich with, you've obviously never looked up the word in the dictionary. But this definition is not as scary as it seems. Let's look at this extract bit by bit so that we can see what the definitions of cheese have been given. The first word that we see in the extract is cheese. Cheese is the head word. Wow, now what does head word mean? The head word is a word that is being defined in the dictionary. In other words, the word cheese is the word that's being explained in this example and all the words in this entry are related to the word cheese. So, it is the head word. Now let's continue with the next bit. What do the Z and N behind the word cheese mean? The letters in the brackets that appear after the head words are an indication of the pronunciation. So here, after the word cheese, we have a Z, indicating that it's pronounced cheese. Sometimes the whole word is written phonetically, which means as it is pronounced. But in this case, because cheese is a simple word, we are just given the tricky part. Now, let's go into the next bit. The N tells us the word is a noun, just like a V would indicate the word was a verb, or an A would indicate an adjective. To save space and money, dictionary compilers use abbreviations. Although it can be quite frustrating to have to go to the front of the dictionary to look up abbreviations we don't know, can you imagine how heavy a dictionary would be if everything was written out in full? Also, as you use your dictionary more and more, you will come to know many of the abbreviations, so you won't have to keep referring to the list. Okay, so back to our word cheese. Now that we know it is a noun and that it is pronounced cheese, we are now ready to see what the word cheese actually means. Here is the first meaning of the word cheese. It is a food made of press curds, complete cake, etc. of this within rind. The little one lets us know that there is more than one meaning. The dictionary then says bread and cheese in italics. The reason why bread and cheese is in italics is because it is an expression. What is an expression? Well, let's find out. An expression is a phrase that people commonly use. In other words, people often say, oh, I'm just having bread and cheese for lunch, or he lives on a diet of bread and cheese. Well, back to our definition of cheese. Here we see the word chalk. 
Chalk is in capital letters because there is another reference to it, which means that you can look up chalk in the dictionary too. Well, here is the entry for chalk. Chalk, pronounced orc, is a noun. It's white, soft, earthy limestone used for burning into lime and for writing and drawing. Colored preparation of like texture used in crayons for drawing. A geological term, strata or layers consisting mainly of chalk. As different as chalk from cheese, unlike in essentials. But the part I'm interested in is this bit here where it says, as different as chalk from cheese. According to this extract, this expression means to be different in essentials. For example, if you say that you and your brother are as different as chalk from cheese, it means that you and your brother are really different. Well, back to our definition of cheese. After chalk and cheese comes the word green, which is in capital letters. So we know that it is another expression that we could look up. And next we read hot cheese, and then we can see that it is followed by SL in brackets. Hot cheese means bad luck. If you go to the front of the dictionary, you will see that SL means slang. Slang is an informal word or phrase not regarded as standard in a language. So, if someone tells you that they failed their maths test, you may say hot cheese, meaning bad luck. But you wouldn't use this expression in formal writing. Well, let's move on to see what the next part of the extract says. As you can see, the definition for cheese continues. Here is a two, which means that we are coming to a new group of meanings. In group two, there are three different meanings. Fruit of mellow, round flat object, example, heavy flat wooden disc used in a game called Skittles, and slang for important person. Cheese also means fruit of mellow. This is a plant. And then also round flat object. Example, heavy flat wooden disc used for a game called Skittles. You can see that all these are completely different meanings that have nothing to do with the type of cheese that we eat. Now here is another SL in brackets. What does this tell us? If you call someone the cheese or the big cheese, it is slang for calling him or her an important person. But because it is a slang word, you wouldn't go up to the principal of your school and say, Sir, you're the cheese. We don't have time to go through all the meanings of cheese now. So I'm going to skip a bit of the extract and move on to this section of the definition. Board, from which cheese is served. Burger, hamburger with cheese in or on it. Cake. Tartlet of pastry filled with sweetened curds. Slang, display of shapely female body in advertisement, etc. Cloth, butter muslin, cutter, knife with broad curved blade. The little curvy lines used before each word tells us that the word cheese is missing in each case. So this part of the definition tells us what a cheese board, cheeseburger, cheesecake, cheese cloth, and cheese cutter are. I'm sure you didn't realize that cheese was such a complicated word, but there is still something else that the definition of cheese tells us about this word. In square brackets at the end of the definition, it also gives us its etymology. Etymology is the history or origin of a word. So, let's go back to our dictionary and see what it tells us about where the word cheese comes from. Now I know this looks scary. On first glance, it hardly seems to be English. But don't worry, we can go through it step by step. We see that cheese has a complicated origin. The OE tells us that it comes from Old English and that people who spoke Old English got the word from the people who spoke Old High German. Don't worry if you didn't know these abbreviations. They will all be in the front of a dictionary. Well. That's the entry for cheese, the noun, but that's not all. If you look a little further down in the definition of cheese, you'll notice that there is another entry for cheese, the verb. Here we are told that if you add D to cheese, you get the expression cheesed off. This is slang, and we could see by the SL that's in brackets over here. And cheesed off means bored or exasperated. In other words, if you are cheesed off, 
you are irritated. We've now looked at cheese, the noun, and a form of cheese that is a verb, but there is still more. Cheese also has a form that is an adjective. Let's look at it very briefly. Cheesy, pronounced Z, is an adjective. Like or tasting of cheese, slang for inferior, cheap and nasty. Hence, cheesiness is a noun from the word cheese, to which we added the letter Y. We know this is the entry for the adjective of cheese because of the A over here. The adjectives is this word, cheesy. It has two meanings. The first meaning is what we might expect, like or tasting of cheese. We might say that we like the cheesy taste of macaroni and cheese, or that cheesy pizza is our favorite. The second meaning is the slang meaning. In slang, to say something is cheesy is to imply that it is cheap and nasty. Maybe you've heard someone being described as having a cheesy grin. This means that his or her smile is insincere. Pay attention here to how cheesy is written. Notice this little line after the word chi. This is to tell us where the stress or emphasis falls. In English, one syllable gets more stress than another syllable in the same word. Cheesy has two syllables, chi, z. Which syllable gets stressed more, chi or z? This little slanting line over here comes at the end of the stressed syllable. So we know that chi gets stressed. So it tells us to say chi, z, not chi, z. Well, we've learned quite a lot about cheese in this lesson. But I really hope that you have seen how much information your dictionary contains if you just know how to look for it. To check how well you can use your dictionary, it is time for today's task. Look up the word chalk in your dictionary, then answer the following questions. Number one, what part of the definition shows us how to pronounce the word? Number two, what part of speech is chalk? Number three, use chalk as a verb in a sentence which clearly shows its meaning. Remember, the more you use your dictionary, the easier it will become. Join me next time for more about using your dictionary. But from me, goodbye.